once again good morning and a very warm welcome to all my dear students in this video i'll be discussing the topic taxonomy in relation to embryology or the role of embryology in plant taxonomy this is for the 5th semester bsc botany students of the university of mysore in order to understand this session you should have a prior knowledge of embryology this picture as you all can see has the whole gist of embryology we'll be going to discuss all these aspects these are the contents of today's session now to identify a plant we check all the morphological characters of the plant the stem root leaf flower fruit etc similarly we can also check the embryological characters of a plant and identify it then what is embryology embryology is the study of structure and development of embryo including structure and development of male and female reproductive organs fertilization and similar other processes so to be more specific plant embryology is the study of a lot many things like microsporogenesis microgametogenesis megasporogenesis megagametogenesis double fertilization zygote production embryo development endosperm development and lastly seed formation all this is studied under embryology let us now study about some practical applications and examples of such embryological characteristics which have taxonomic significance so these are some basic evidences from embryology for taxonomy the anther loculi number number of the anther locules and their arrangement anther wall formation the wall formation of anther you remember the picture of tiers of anther the four wall layers of anther anther wall formation and endothecium type type of endothecium the archesporial cell number the presence or absence of aril whether the aril is present or absent the type of embryo sac development whether it is four nucleate eight nucleate etc the embryo and embryogeny type the endosperm type the integument number and structural type the ovule orientation type and position the tepetal type the perisperm presence or absence the character of the nucellus and the hostorium formation type so these are all a few evidences with which plants have been embryologically classified in which manner embryology has helped in taxonomy we know that the flowering plants are classified as dicots and monocots based on what based on a character which is an embryological character that is the basic difference between the monocot and a dicot plant itself is in the number of cotyledons in the embryo so based on the number of cotyledons which is an embryological character the plants are classified as flowering plants are classified as monocotyledonous those having a single cotyledon and dicotyledonous or those having two cotyledons so there are two cotyledons or seed leaves in a dicot seed and only one cotyledon in a monocot plant seed there is an order helobiae in the monocotyledons all plants in this order have a common main character that is helobial type of endosperm so endosperm development so an order has been created based on the this embryological character as you all know there are three types of 
endosperm development seen in uh, plants that is nuclear type, cellular type and helobial type. In this order helobiae of monocots all the plants exhibit helobial type of endosperm. In orchidales of monocots once again there is a distinct character that is undifferentiated embryo and very little or scanty or no endosperm at all. So all plants here have this characteristic feature that is undifferentiated embryo and seeds with very little or no endosperm at all. Coming to Cyperaceae, only one microspore per microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell is formed and this microspore develops into pollen grain while the other three degenerate as in case of normal megaspore mother cell. All genera and species of Cyperaceae show this character. It is possible to identify a member of this family just by microscopic study of its anthers as by other floral characters. The simultaneous type of microspore formation and functioning of all the four microspores in Junkaceae indicate that it is this family from which the Cyperaceae have probably been derived. This is the picture showing the development of pollen, the degenerating microspores below and one functional microspore above. Centrospermales. The Cactaceae agree with the rest of the Centrospermales in having the following embryological characters. Glandular anther tepetum whose cells become 2 to 4 nucleate. Microspore mother cells in which two meiotic divisions are succeeded by a simultaneous quadripartition into the microspores. Trinucleate pollen grains. Campylotropus ovules with strongly curved funiculi and massive nu nucellus. There's a mistake, nucellus, a hypodermal archesporeal cell which cuts off a wall cell, formation of a nuclear cap originating from periclinal division of cells of the nucellar epidermis, functioning of the perisperm as the main storage region. So these are the characters which the centrospermales show. Loranthaceae. Loranthaceae differs from Viscoidae with regard to the mode of development of embryo sac, endosperm, embryo and in the location of viscid zone of the fruit. Now there is a genus called Trappa species. There is a lot of confusions among taxonomists regarding this Trappa genus. According to some taxonomists, Trappa belongs to Onagraceae. But according to some other taxonomists, this genus has to be placed in a separate monotypic family Trappaceae. Monotypic family is one which has only one genus. Embryological evidences suggest that placing Trappa in a monotypic family is most logical. The reason is that we find a well-developed suspensor hostorium in Trappa. The embryo sac is 8 nucleate embryo sac which is not seen in any of the Onagraceae family members. Ovary of Trappa is semi-inferior, bilocular ovary and its fruit droop. While on the other hand, Onagraceae members have inferior ovary and tetralocular and the fruit is a capsule. So the first picture is that of Trappa and the fruit droop of Trappa and uh, top right is also Trappa. It is an aquatic plant having heteromorphic leaves, two types of leaves and below the one with yellow flowers is a 
plant belonging to onagrasi family which is enothera so the uh, capsule fruit has been shown in enothera here the fruit in onagrasi is capsule while in trapa has got droop so it has been separated from onagrasi and kept in a monotypic family the trapaceae these are some of the differences between trapaceae and onagrasi with respect to ovary megasporogenesis endosperm embryo proembryo suspensor embryo and the fruit here you can see the pattern of female gametophyte development of angiosperms three genera of angiosperms that is polygonum alisma and drusa both megasporogenesis and megagametogenesis has been shown the chalazal end of the female gametophyte is up in the last column the chalazal end of the female gametophyte is upwards and the micropylar end is down fg is female gametophyte coming to santalaceae some of the embryologists raised doubts about the position of exocarpus to gymnosperm instead of angiosperm they said exocarpus resembles gymnosperms most with naked ovules etc so it has to be placed near to taxaceae of gymnosperm but the embryological studies of manasi ram clearly proves that exocarpus is a perfectly valid angiosperm with an archesporial cell functioning as a megaspore mother cell an embryo sac of polygonum type a cellular endosperm with a chalazal hostorium and a pericarp derived from the wall of the ovary hence the correct position therefore lies in the santalaceae sandalwood family to which it was previously assigned these are pictures of exocarpus which according to some had to be placed in gymnosperms and the right one is santalaceae sandal centalum album so in this video i have just quoted only a few examples there are several examples like this with which with the with such embryological evidences plants can be taxonomically identified now to conclude embryology is the study of successive stages of sporogenesis gametogenesis and growth and development of embryo embryological evidence has been used in solving taxonomical problems at almost all levels these evidences have resolved the doubtful systematic positions of several taxa some consider that such a grouping has great taxonomical significance while others are of the opinion that phylogenetic relationship is apparent from the embryological studies however not convincing these are the references please go through thank you